Okay, there are three basic fields of accounting. Financial accounting, I say that answers the question, how did you do? Managerial accounting, I say that answers the question, how are we doing? And tax accounting, which answers the question, what is our fair share of taxes? This video is intended to be a short introduction to the field of financial accounting. The accounting process in general involves identifying transactions, recording them, communicating them by preparing accounting reports, and we're going to talk about four of those today, and then analyzing and interpreting those reports for users. Financial accounting is about preparing four reports. The income statement, that's our report card. Over a period of time, what were our sales? What was our revenue? Minus our expenses to get that leaves us with our hopefully net income. If our expenses are more than our revenue, it's a net loss, but hopefully our revenue or our sales are more than our expenses, so we have net income. There's an argument that this number here, net income, is the most important number of all the numbers in all our financial statements. This is called the single step income statement. It's just revenue minus expenses. The second report is a statement of shareholders equity and the heart of that is the statement of retained earnings. If we're a corporation, we have a statement of shareholders equity and the heart of that is the statement of retained earnings. Retained earnings at the beginning of the year plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end of the year. I often ask students to memorize this. Retained earnings at the beginning plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. So retained earnings means exactly what it says net income that the company has earned but not paid out to its shareholders in the form of dividends. Dividends are usually cash. If a company has extra money around and doesn't need it to invest in its business, it will reward its shareholders by cutting them a check. The third financial statement is the balance sheet. It looks like the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. And part of stockholders equity is the retained earnings. So even though revenue and expenses do not appear anywhere on the balance sheet, they eventually get there because net income gets closed into retained earnings and then retained earnings appear as a part of stockholders' equity. So whereas the income statement covers the period of time, it's our report card, did we make money or lose money, the balance sheet is as of a moment in time, as of the end of the year, for example, what did we own, what did we owe, and the difference between what we owned and what we owe is our equity in the business. The first three of the four statements come from the accounting cycle. The fourth we have to create in a separate uh, system. It's called the statement of cash flows and it explains to the world what happened to our cash balance over the course of the year. It breaks it down into operating, investing, and financing activities and explains the change in cash. Well, you might think, why doesn't our cash just go up by our net income? Well, suppose none of our customers paid us. We may have made money, but we didn't get any cash. So those are the kinds of adjustments that we'll make in the statement of cash flows to explain to the outside world what happened to our cash balance. So if you're using the uh, 10th edition of Harrison's Financial Accounting, they have uh, the financials of the Gap Inc. to illustrate the four financial statements. They're a little bit old, but they're only out of date uh, as far as two or three uh, accounting policies go. So let's start by looking at the income statement. A couple things about form for any financial statement. You have the name of the company at the top. You have the title of the statement. I've put a note in here that this is single step format. That's just me. And then you have the time period. Uh, remember the income statement covers a period of time. So for fiscal 2011, the most recent year is written closest to the account titles. Here's their sales, and then they subtract all their expenses to come up with net income of $833 million. This is single step format. There's also uh, the much more frequently used multi step format. The multi step simply strikes subtotals on the way down. Sales minus cost of goods sold gives us our gross profit. What's our markup? minus our operating expenses, because it's operating income, minus our interest expense net. And so uh, interest expense net means if we borrowed money, we pay interest expense. If we have some money in the bank, we earn interest income, and companies often offset those and put them in the income statement at a net number. 
that gives us income before taxes, subtract our taxes, and that gives us net income. So whether you're using the single step or the multi-step format, you end up with exactly the same answer. Since the gap is a corporation, it has a consolidated statement of stockholders' equity, and the key part of that is the statement of retained earnings. Retained earnings at the beginning of the period plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. Retained earnings at the beginning of the next year plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. And just like all the other financial statements, there's the name of the company, the name of the statement, the period that it covers, dollar sign at the top, single lines show that we're doing subtra subtraction or addition, and a dollar sign at the bottom and double underline shows the world that we're done. The third statement is the balance sheet. It's as of a certain date, and it shows what we own versus what we owe. And the difference between what we own and what we owe is our shareholders' equity. This is in report form in that we've got assets on the top and liabilities and owner's equity on the bottom. Account form is the one we're used to seeing, assets on the left and liabilities and owner's equity on the right. Cash and cash equivalents, everyone knows what that is. What's missing is accounts receivable because you don't go to the gap and say, I want to buy these pants, send me a bill and I'll pay you in 30 or 60 days. But a lot of companies do have accounts receivable. They've done the work, they're just waiting to get paid. Short-term investments means that they've invested in stocks and bonds of other companies. Merchandise inventory is stuff that they bought that they plan to sell to somebody else. Property, plant, and equipment is listed at its net value, in other words, minus accumulated depreciation. Accumulated means total. So this is our property and equipment that we bought minus how much we've written off so far via depreciation expense. Current maturity is a long-term debt. It's stuff that's due within the next year. Accounts payable means we're going to pay for it later and we didn't sign a note. Accrued expenses and others are just other things like rent that's due that we haven't quite paid yet. Income tax is payable. We all know what that is. Long-term debt is stuff that we borrowed that's due over a year from now. And the, one of the ways that this balance sheet is out of date is that since 2018 and 2019, leases now count as liabilities. So you would have a right of use asset on the left-hand side of the balance sheet and a lease liability on the right-hand side. We'll talk about that later. And then the stockholders equity section has common stock. That's the par value of the stock. That's meaningless. Additional paid in capital. That's the money that shareholders paid above the meaningless number of par. Retained earnings. Retained earnings at the beginning plus net income minus dividends gives us retained earnings at the end. And that's how these things are articulated. This is how they all relate to each other. This is how revenue and expenses eventually get to the balance sheet. AOCI is accumulated other comprehensive income. Sometimes there's important stuff that hasn't happened yet, but it's so important we want to tell people about it. So we own bonds of another company, IOUs of another company. We haven't sold them, we still own them but they've gone up in value. That would be other comprehensive income. And just as net income closes into retained earnings, that other comprehensive income, important stuff that hasn't happened yet, is going to close into accumulated other comprehensive income. And treasury stock is when we buy back our shares. And there's lots of reasons for us to do that. Maybe we want to raise the price. Maybe we want to increase earnings per share. Then finally, there's a statement of cash flows that explains to the world what happened to our cash balance from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, looking at it from operating activities, investment activities, and financing activities. All of is funny. All right, I hope that helped.